Hello and welcome to Hope Collective Church. My name is Andy, my pronouns are he and him, and this is Less Than Three, a three minute or less video highlighting different ways that we are living out the words, you are loved. Here's what's coming up here at Hope Collective Church. Reconciling Ministries Network is a network of church congregations, communities, campus ministries, and individuals who affiliate with the RMN and embrace RMN's commitment to achieving LGBTQIA justice and full inclusion in the life and ministry of the United Methodist Church, both in policy and in practice. We want to encourage individuals to join RMN because individuals are the backbone of RMN. Allies, LGBTQIA+, and everyone who wants to support and seek justice for all people are invited to be a part of this advocacy and support network. You can join with us by going to rmnnetwork.org forward slash R-U-M. This weekend, we chose to honor Juneteenth in a way that is inspired by our core values of empathy, inclusion, trust, and humility. We are introducing the Justice Collective Library. This library will be in the lobby on a cart, and each book has a library card inside of it. You will check out the books for up to one month and return so that someone else can do the same. Books can be donated as long as they meet the criteria of our core values. Today, the books align with Juneteenth and focus on the lived experience of black people by black authors. There is a children's book titled Black Heroes, as well as a young reader's version of How to Fight Racism. If you have books to donate or simply to recommend, please reach out to Marcia Florkey or Kim Petty. We look forward to growing together as we seek justice and equality for everyone. Starting this week, in honor of Pride Month, we will be collecting non-perishable food items for David's Place at Daybreak, in conjunction with Thrivent. David's Place supports LGBTQIA youth and creates an inclusive space for them to be who they are meant to be. We will be collecting for the next three Sundays. There will be black Thrivent bags in the lobby where you can drop off any non-perishable items. Thank you so much for supporting David's Place. And that's what's happening here at Hope Collective Church. Hey friends, my name is Leslie Bonney and my pronouns are she and her. And welcome to Hope Collective Church. We're so glad you've joined us for service today. If this is your first time, grab a cup of coffee and find your sp favorite spot. We're glad you're here. Here at Hope Collective Church, our mission is to develop inclusive communities where people discover sacred worth and calling. And our four core values are empathy. We see people as people, not as objects, not as obstacles, but as people just like we are. Inclusion. We invite everyone to participate fully in our ministries, regardless of the false walls that tend to separate us, including sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender identity, economics, politics, or race. Trust. We are who we say we are. Over time, you'll see that's true. If your trust has been broken by a faith community before, we understand. It's okay not to be okay. And humility. We are confident in our calling, but acknowledge that we are but just one church among many in which God is using to reach this community. We invite everyone to visit our website, hopecollectivechurch.org, where you can register your attendance, leave a prayer request, and make financial contribution. Thank you for your continued support. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, please join Mia in this Juneteenth litany. Hello and welcome friends. Welcome to Hope Collective Church. My name is Mia Calarese and my pronouns are she and her. We'd like to thank you for joining us again this week. We're always so happy to have our online congregation with us. And as many of you know, it's a very important day in American history. Today is Juneteenth. So I'd like to share a little bit about the history of Juneteenth. Juneteenth is a holiday, a holiday that commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. It recalls how the states of Louisiana and Texas heard the news that President Abraham Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st of 1863. Slavery continued in those two states for more than two years after the proclamation was signed because the word had yet to travel there. Texas and Louisiana finally got the good news on June 19, 1865. Former slaves broke out in spontaneous celebration. These were dangerous times, and even in the face of resistance and threat, 
the formerly enslaved Africans found ways to give voice to the wide range of thoughts and emotions at the announcement of the end of legalized slavery in the United States of America. Did you know that our African-American brothers and sisters have an anthem? You may have heard it more recently in years, um, more recent years. Um, you will often hear it alongside the national anthem at sporting events. The song is called Lift Every Voice and Sing, and it is a song of freedom and hope. And I would love now for you to join me in this litany adaptation of Lift Every Voice and Sing. I will go ahead and read the leader's parts and you are welcome to follow along in the people's parts, but I'm also people. So <laughs> I'm gonna do the leader part and I'm gonna, gonna speak along with you during the parts to follow, okay? Celebration rises up from the deep places, finding voice in the light and air no longer denied. Lift every voice and sing, sing till heaven and earth ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Celebration rises, not blind to the suffering, not blind to the sorrow. Celebration comes at a cost. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our parents sighed? Celebration rises, remembering the way we have come, the paths taken that have brought us here now to this place and time of celebration. Celebration rises up and up, full of remembering. Remembering the ones led to freedom by Harriet remembering lives and freedom stolen. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. Celebration rises recognizing what has been done and left undone, knowing there is still and yet much to do, so much further to go. Celebration rises, naming the victories, recognizing the challenges yet ahead. Celebration rises on voices offering unfinished praise. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Celebration rises, resisting illusions to be embraced by the real and abiding presence of God who breaks our chains and sets us free for freedom in power and love and joy. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who hast brought us thus far on our way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path, we pray. Celebration rises with the power of healing wings and promise to endure. Celebration rises, celebrating that by God's grace, I am because you are, and you are because I am. Celebrating that the fullness of my humanity does not diminish yours, and the fullness of your humanity does not diminish mine. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land, true to who we are, true to who we have been and who we are becoming. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen and amen again. Feel free to stand in worship or sit comfortably. Sing along, clap along, or just let the spirit move you.
Step out of the shadows Step out of the grave Break into the wild And don't be afraid Run into wide open spaces Grace is waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Where the Spirit of the Lord There is freedom, there is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom, there is freedom Come out of the dark Just as you are Into the fullness of His love For the Spirit is here Let there burdens bring all of your scars come back to communion come back to the stars run into wide open spaces grace is waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted grace is waiting well, the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there Out of the dark, 
into the fullness of his love and the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom freedom yes freedom let there be Hey friends, my name is John Morgan. My pronouns are he and him. Uh, welcome to Hope Collective Church and thanks for finding us online today. Well, we're in week number two of this series, Called In. And we're looking throughout the, the scripture in the Old and New Testament and reading stories about how God has called people in, both towards God and, and towards other people. And we're just simply asking the question, what does it mean to be called in by God as individuals and as Hope Collective Church? Well, have you ever noticed or, or realized that, that God has always called in imperfect people? In this book called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, Peter Scazzaro says, The Bible does not spin the flaws and weaknesses of its heroes. Moses was a murderer. Hosea's wife was a prostitute, Peter rebuked God, Noah got drunk, Jonah was a racist, Jacob was a liar, John Mark deserted Paul, Elijah burned out, Jeremiah was depressed and suicidal, Thomas doubted, Moses had a temper, Timothy had ulcers, and all these people send the same message that every human being on earth, regardless of their gifts and strengths, is weak, vulnerable, and dependent on God and others. And right away we might say amen because uh, we find ourselves fitting that category of imperfect people. Uh, but then we might get uptight as well when we hear these words um, that everyone is weak, vulnerable, and dependent on God and others because we spend a lifetime trying to be strong, or at least trying to appear to be strong. And and we spend a lifetime trying to make it on our own and be independent. And we probably spend way too much time worrying about what others think about us. And sometimes we forget that we are all people. We're all human and just trying to make a difference and, and a lot of times just trying to survive. So what does it mean to depend on others and to, to, to depend on God, and what does that have to, be, to do with being called in? Well, today we'll be reading about Elijah in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. This story takes place out of after a famous showdown on Mount Carmel. And that, that almost sounds delicious. <laughs> uh, well, the object of this showdown was really simple. Whoever's God sends down fire has the real God. So the prophets of a God called Baal kept calling out for this God to send fire, and their God did nothing. And it, when it was Elijah's turn, um, he not only prayed for God to send down fire, but before he did, uh, he doused the, the altar area with water. So all the logs were soggy, so it would seem almost impossible that, there, that a fire could, could take place. And then Elijah prayed this simple prayer, Lord, I am your servant. Let it be known today that you are God. Will you pray that, that prayer with me? I think it's an amazing, amazing words being spoken here. Lord, I am your servant. Let it be known today that you are God. And God sent down fire. <laughs> And after that, the Israelites captured and killed all the prophets of Baal. And at that time, there was a king named Ahab who did not follow the Lord, and he was married to Jezebel. Maybe that name's uh, familiar to you. Uh, Jezebel also followed other gods. This is where we pick up in chapter uh, in First uh, Kings chapter nineteen, starting with verse one. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and now how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me 
be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Well, in other words, the king's wife was really upset with Elijah, right? She wanted to, she wanted to kill him. And sometimes it helps us if we uh, put ourselves into the, the biblical stories, right? So we can relate to the story. And, and I'm pretty certain <laughs> that you are being chased down by, a, by an angry king's wife who wants to kill you right now. <laughs> but we all have overwhelming times in our lives, right? We all have stresses from time to time. Those stresses seem to uh, take over our lives. Those, uh, the chaos attempts to take over our peace. Maybe you're starting to think right now about the stresses and the chaos that are taking over in your life right now. What do you do when life becomes overwhelming like this? Well, you don't have to answer right now, <laughs> but I am just curious how many of you would say that eating chocolate is part of the ritual when life becomes overwhelming? If so, I'm, you know, I belong to that club as well. <laughs> well, let's read on and see what Elijah did. This is starting with verse three. Elijah was afraid and he ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the, under the bush and fell asleep. How, how many of us would have ran for our lives as well? <laughs> Well, at first, we may be surprised by Elijah's actions when we read this story. I mean, isn't he some kind of biblical, biblical hero? Didn't God just show up and show off on the top of Mount Carmel? Couldn't Elijah have recalled a scripture or two that would give him courage to be strong and courageous and, and to face his giants in life? I mean, what kind of faith in God is this to simply run away? But what does running do for Elijah? It gets him out of danger. It separates him from the overwhelming. It takes him to the wilderness where, where there's no chaos and it puts him in a quiet place. Elijah was burned out and then some, right? Elijah was overwhelmed and then some. He was facing a little bit of danger and then some. Elijah was exhausted by life and by ministry. For the sake of self-care, Elijah ran. Now, too many times we try to stay in it, whatever it is, right? When the best thing to do is simply get out of it for a minute. To run to the wilderness, I'm going to quote from the same book again, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And Schizero says this, Self-care is never a selfish act. It is simply good stewardship of the only gift I have, the gift I was put on earth to offer others. Anytime we can listen to true self and give it the care it requires, we do it not only for ourselves, but for the many others whose lives we touch. In other words, if we're killing ourselves to get through life, what good are we to the people who are depending on us? We need to take time to care for ourselves. This is what Elijah is teaching us. Right? It, God is calling us into self-care. So Elijah, the scripture we just read, rested under this broom bush. The broom tree is, um, or the broom bush, is common in the Middle East. It would have looked like, uh, those of you who are watching online, like this tree with white weeping branches. And what's interesting about this bush is that even though the region is dry, these trees are strong and vibrant, and they easily multiply 
the people would use the roots for cooking because the roots would would burn forever and the blossoms are bright and they would give a sweet honey fragrance so in this story the broom bush symbolizes renewal and with renewal comes restoration <laughs> when elijah arrived at this broom bush he was exhausted and he was depressed and he said he was ready to die and the tree or this bush represents renewal it represents uh, receiving strength even in the desert places of life it represents a fire that lasts that that never dies out it represents the new life that god can can make out of our pain and out of our suffering this is the invitation today if 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 we don't hear anything else from the scripture, to simply go out to the wilderness and away from our struggles and be restored by God, to receive renewal, to allow, allow that fire within to be rejuvenated, <laughs> to be reignited, to allow God to restore the beauty of God's calling upon our lives. Will you take time to allow God to restore your life today? Will you be called in to receive care and to be renewed? So if we go back to the scripture, Elijah falls asleep under the broom bush. And it continues in, in verse 5. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. And he looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. And then the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Now, remember at first, uh, Elijah fell asleep because he was worn out and he was stressed. And sometimes we sleep uh, to avoid our circumstances, right? It's a coping mechanism. <laughs> and God saw Elijah in this condition and, and he touched Elijah right there. It was right there under the broom bush that, that God provided warm bread and water. And what did Elijah do after he drank the, ate and drank the first time? Well, he slept again. But this time, the sleep wasn't just from the panic and the stress. The sleep was after he was touched by God, after God had given him food and, and drink. You see, we sleep differently when all is well, don't we? We aren't trying to carry the, the weight of the journey and when our bodies can let go and relax and when we, we can breathe a, a deeper breath. I don't know about you, but I'm usually one counseling session away from a good night's sleep. <laughs> and if you add a massage after the counseling se session, well, I'll be sleeping for an entire week. <laughs> it's after that self-care. After Elijah slept again, the angel touched him again, and Elijah got up and, and gained even more strength. And we see the importance uh, of this time in the wilderness. God is touching Elijah's life and giving Elijah strength, um, even enough to travel for 40 more days and to climb another mountain. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to Elijah at that point, and God said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And in verse 10, he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your, your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. I'm the only one, Elijah says. Um, even though Elijah is beginning to care for himself and he's starting to heal a little bit, there's still signs of being burned out, right? What do we tend to say when we are burned out? We tend to say, I'm the only one. I'm the only one who can do this task right. I'm the only one who knows how, how to do this. What's another famous line? If I want to get it done right, then I have to do it 
myself. Was Elijah really the only one that God could use? <laughs> was Elijah the, the only one on the face of the earth that God could call? <laughs> Well, of course not. In fact, we read later in this account that God sends Elijah back down the mountain to anoint several other people. Well, let's skip to verse 15. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat to succeed you as prophet. You see, God's showing Elijah here, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. There are others around you that I can use as well. See, when God God calls us into self-care, we aren't just called to depend on God, but we're also called to depend on other people as well. That might scare us a lot because we know that whoever we depend on is going to be imperfect. (laughs) And may I add, imperfect just like us, right? (laughs) That's the scary part. God's going to call us to depend on other people who are imperfect just like us. I was listening to a podcast a while back by Brene Brown, and she suggested that we give up on perfect and embrace good enough. And I put good enough in in quotes here. I love that, especially as a pastor, because I feel like everyone is looking for the perfect church and the perfect pastor, and we're not it, and I'm not the perfect pastor, all right? (laughs) I think we should put a sign out in front of Hope Collective Church and in all of our marketing that says, Hope Collective Church, we're good enough. (laughs) That's part of self-care, right? When we recognize that it's okay to depend on others even though they're imperfect, just like us. (laughs) You can't do everything on your own, right? It's okay to be good enough. It's okay to ask others for help. It's okay to need other people who are just good enough. It's okay to build up a community and lean on that community once in a while. In fact, it's not just okay, but it's necessary. Being good enough and depending on other people who are good enough This is how God calls us in, to (laughs) self-care, to rely on God and to rely on other people. (laughs) Well, before leaving the scripture, I want to take a look at some of my most favorite words in the whole Bible. And we're going to back up to uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11. The Lord said, go out. And stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came a gentle whisper. Or some of your translations say a still, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. (laughs) Sometimes we try to see God and, and hear God in all the wrong things. God is not the orchestrator of the fire in our life. And we tend tend to blame God. And we say things like, why are you doing this to me? But God's not in that fire, right? And we try to find God in the winds and in the earthquake. And we say, God, what's going on here? But God didn't cause those things either. Right? We get we get overwhelmed with life. We try to find God in the stress and we try to find God in the hectic schedules and in the busyness and we try to find God in the drama and in all the chaos. 
not that God isn't available during the, these times in our lives, but most of the time we aren't making ourselves available to God. Especially during those times we really need to listen. Or as the scripture says in Psalm 46 and verse 10, we really need to be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. We need to take time in the wilderness. We need to find the, the broom bush, right? <laughs> to be renewed and to be revitalized. And so I just want to pray right now. Uh, the, the starting of our self-care, the, maybe it's the continuation for some of us to be called in to self-care. Let's just take time right now and pray. And to ask God to show us what we need to do to separate ourselves from the chaos and to be cared for. Let us pray. God, thank you for the scripture. Thank you for the testimony of Elijah. Thank you for showing us how important it is, God, to oftentimes go off into the wilderness and, and to find those, those spaces, God, where we can be nurtured and, and cared for. God, will you show us those times and places today and this week and in the weeks to come? God, will you bring to us people in our lives that we can depend on? The imperfect people, God. Will you show us who those people are? God, will you keep on reminding us that being Good enough is good enough, God, that we don't have to be perfect. Continue to call us in, God, towards you, towards other people, God. We pray in the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. 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 I can't explain peace that stills my soul. Light in the darkest place, life, even in the pain, it feels like coming home. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I am free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I am free. Amen. Here I'm alive again. Gone is the weight of sin. Oh, sweet liberty. Praise God who saved my life. I'm bound with the blood of Christ. I have been redeemed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I am free. Amen. Where the Spirit
thank God Almighty, I am free at last. All my chains are in the past. Thank God Almighty, I am free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, I am free at last. All my chains are in the past. Thank God Almighty, I am free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, I am free at last. All my chains are As we enter into this time of communion, I want to remind everyone that you all are welcome to participate with us. We'll be reading now the Eucharistic prayer book in honor of Juneteenth. Uh, I found a special uh, communion liturgy that uh, calls all people to come together in unity. The words that uh, you'll say will be on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Reconciling God, you draw together heaven and earth, and in the death and resurrection of Jesus, you break down the dividing wall of hostility. Your Holy Spirit draws all people to yourself in one race and nation, and heals the cancer of prejudice and fear within the hearts of children on your way. You judge us not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. And you turn the truthful story of our past into a hopeful story for our future in you. And so you draw us into the company of your angels around your eternal throne, singing their hymn of unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God, the three in one, as we bring our diverse gifts to the altar of your sacrifice, transform them into your food that never runs out. Sanctify us by your grace, that we may enjoy the unity of your spirit in the bonds of peace, and that this bread of the field and cup of the hillside may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who when he was with his disciples, he took the bread and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples after he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat, remember. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, again gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, disciples and said take and drink this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins it represents a new covenant between your creator and you as often as you drink remember great is the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen christ will come again god of justice and mercy bless your whole creation be close to all who know their need of you. 
give peace to those living in the midst of death and dying in the midst of life. Flood this earth with your kingdom, that justice may roll down like a river and righteousness like a never-failing stream. Until we see you face to face and recognize our diverse faces in the face of your Son, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of Holy of the Holy Spirit, all honors, all honor and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. And the blood of Christ shed for you take and drink. Our holy God, just as we have gathered around the table inclusively with diverse company, God, may we take that same inclusivity and live out our lives together in your creation, with your love. Amen. 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 Hi, friends. I'm Reverend Angie, and my pronouns are she and her. As we close out our service this week, we want to thank you for joining in with us, and we hope that this service has been a blessing to you. Angie wants me to remind you that if, if you are in need of prayer, please feel free to contact him, aheal at hopecollectivechurch.org, and you can message him on Facebook. No prayer is too small, and Andy is always willing to pray for you. Now, as we celebrate Juneteenth this weekend with our African-American brothers and sisters, I want to bless you to go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Strengthen the faint and hearted. Support the weak. Comf comfort the afflicted. Be patient with all, but by no means make peace with oppression. Love and serve the Lord with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, my friends, and remember above all these three words. You are loved.